So you guys want to see something really cool? This is what the ASI 1600 captured last night in just one six minute sub. The Crescent Nebula. Freaking awesome. All right, so this is the morning after a morning, an early morning, a 3 a.m. morning, where I shot the Crescent Nebula. And so I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna pack my stuff up. And the really cool thing is, when you come out, everything is parked and uh, ready to go. So when I woke back up this morning, uh, not at the 2 a.m. wake up time, but at the 7 a.m. wake up time, <clears throat> I thought I would uh, show you how I shoot some flats because I got to shoot flats for the hydrogen data that I took on the Crescent Nebula last night. And the reason I got to shoot flats is I learned a lesson the hard way. I thought, you know, if I'm shooting early in the morning, uh, I'll go ahead and set up at night. I'll polar align. I'll get everything good to go. I'll shut it all down. I'll put the caps on. Uh, I'll leave my dew bands on and uh, come in and get a little sleep and wake back up and everything's ready to go. Sounds like a good plan, right? Except for my focal reducer fogged over. And then I tried to take a hair dryer to it, which that worked, but then it created a temperature difference between the focal reducer and the camera. And then the camera sensor fogged over and it did this. So to avoid all this, last night after I set up, pulled the camera off. Oh, wait, I measured the angle of the camera so I could try to get it back in the same position. I used a little bubble level app on my phone, put it on the flat part of the filter wheel. Then I pulled the camera off, left it out here on the patio so it kind of kept an ambient temperature. <clears throat> and then I woke up this morning, put it all back on, lined it back up and shot uh, the Crescent Nebula from like 3 in the morning till 7 a.m. So about four hours of HA. Well, let's uh, get over here. Let me show you how I'm going to set up to do my flats. It's just something I don't think I've done a video on yet. I don't think so. Anyway, and uh, we'll do that. And then we'll do something else that's different besides packing up earlier. Who does a packing up video? This guy. I'm going to take the data on a thumb drive, take it into my uh, office and process it for the first time. You know, usually I like to process my images and see what they look like if I'm gonna do a processing tutorial uh, in case they're garbage. But this time I'm gonna take it in there and essentially we'll get to see what it looks like for the first time together. Aww. All right, so let me adjust the camera angle here and I'll show you how I get this uh, telescope set up to do flats. All right, so I set back up here in the patio <clears throat> and um, I've basically got power to the mount and I've got the USB cable connected to the USB hub 
so that I can operate my camera. And I wanna pivot the scope around. I haven't touched the focus or anything like that. Just gonna pivot it around so it's vertical, lock it down. And I use a golf shirt. I found of all of my white t-shirts, this golf shirt is the best. I don't know what it is, but it works good. I don't know if it's the material or what. And then I stole a hair thingy from my girlfriend. So basically stretch that around and then you want to make sure that you get the shirt nice and flat. You don't want any wrinkles, any lines, and you definitely want to make sure that you don't have any like uh, dirt or anything. So nice and flat. And then behind the computer here is where I keep the uh, tracing board. It's like 15 bucks from Amazon. And of all the light sources I've found, it's the best. It provides the most consistent light. But I've also found that you gotta put it on the lowest setting. Turn it on, you probably can't even see it because it's so bright out here. So I just flip it over and balance it. So that's it. So let's get over here to the, uh, the computer and I'll show you how I take my flats in APT. All right, so we're here in uh, Astrophotography Tool. This is uh, one of the subs I took last night. This is what we're gonna be processing here in a bit. We're going over here to the gear tab, actually the tools tab, sorry. And we're gonna go to CCD Flats Aid and our camera is connected. We don't have to worry about cooling with flats. So I have to admit that I got these uh, Target ADU, <clears throat> some of these settings here off of the uh, Astro Quest 1 Kirk Zapatillo. Man, Kirk, if I screwed your last name up, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, I got these settings from his video to basically get within the range. So what this thing is gonna do is it's gonna shoot a series of test flats to create the best exposure time and then it'll populate your um, sequencing tab over here with that with that run. So I wanna take 10 flats and it's already set up. If I was doing, um, if I was doing RGB, then I would do filter one to one, shoot that, and filter two to two, filter three to three, and so on and so forth. But since all I did last night was just HA, uh, we're gonna just do filter six, which is my HA position. So all I gotta do is hit run, connect filter, filter wheel. wheel connected. Filter wheel connected. Okay, now it's filter hit. Filter change. So it changed the filter. So there's a test flap. And here's the auto stretch on, so you can kind of see. So you can see down here in the bottom, it's running through and it's trying to find the this target ADU. I wish I could explain it better, but I don't. I just let it do its thing. And like I said, the reason I've shot flats Auto for- flats finished. Excuse me. So I've shot flats before for uh, hydrogen, but because I pulled the camera off and it may be just a slight rotation difference and I could have disturbed some dust, I wanted to reshoot the flats. So this is kind of counterintuitive. It says, do you want to overwrite the plan flats aid results? So basically what it's saying is it did a plan and do you want to overwrite it? And the answer is no. So you come over here to your camera tab and look, there's your uh, sequence. So now all you got to do is hit start, just like you would do taking lights. And so you can see over here, it's uh, shot three of 10. Hey puppy. You didn't bark at mama when she came in. You bark at everything else. All right, so nine of 10. Imaging plan finished. Cool. So I already have darks, I already have bias. Um, I just wanted to reshoot the flats. So we can close that down, we can disconnect our camera. Camera disconnected. <clears throat> we can uh, disconnect our filter, filter wheel. Filter wheel disconnected. God, do you have to repeat everything I say? <sighs> and then we can turn off ABT. <laughs> and so let me pause real quick. I'll be right back and I gotta get a USB thumb drive to put in here to transfer the images. So let's grab this uh, thumb drive and let's take it in here to the uh, desktop and let's process the, this uh, Crescent Nebula image and see what we got. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. Adjust glasses, fix hair. Uh, okay, let's go into my computer here and uh, we'll bring in this window. So we got our USB that we just brought in from the patio, 1600 loadout. Let's open that up again. Let me go into my, my, um, my external hard drive. So 1600 mm pro 
and we did a new target. So Crescent Nebula. So now see, we can just copy this whole folder over left click. Actually it's right click. Did I say left click before? I think I said left click a lot before that wasn't right. Left click move here. And let's push that up out of the way. We're going to go to cone nebula and we're going to right click and move this over. Say move here. <clears throat> That's a work in progress target. But let's check it out. Let's see. There's the Astro bin. JPEG. Pretty cool. Like really cool. That's like a 1.8 hours. I don't. Yeah. 1.8 hours. All right. So here's all my lights. And here is my flats. Okay, so let's just close that one out. I want to push this one off to the side. You'll be able to see it, but I'm going to go into Deep Sky Stacker. And let me bring this back over so you can see it on the screen here. Show you something cool I learned about Deep Sky Stacker. I can do this. I can drag it over and do that and then say that. Yes, I don't want any alerts. So here's Deep Sky Stacker. Here's the uh, folder the Crescent Nebula folder that has my lights and my flats. And then I have darks and bias in a calibration folder that I'll click into here. But uh, something cool I just discovered <laughs> after a year of using this thing is I can take this folder here with all the lights in it, <clears throat> drag it like a folder, bring it right over here to the um, main screen, let go. And it's going to say, what kind of, files are these and you're going to leave it selected as light frames and click okay uh, instead of having to go in here to open picture files and click 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 and go find it um, so now i can take the flats drag them over watch this flats files i'll go to um, the calibration frames i'm going to grab the bias yep. so even though this has a master offset file it's not going to pick that up. It's only going to pick up bias for files individually. So we select those as bias frames. Click OK. And our darks, 360 seconds, uh, minus 20. Bring that over and select it as dark frames. All right, so let's uh, drag that over to my other screen. And now we've got everything selected. So we go here to, and when you bring it over, it automatically checks them too. Who knew? Uh, so you got to register, check pictures. Let's go in here to the advanced tab, compute the number of stars, 430 stars. That's cool. Stacking parameters. I have it set to enable two times drizzle. Click okay to that. Um, we're going to click okay to that and, oh, wait, we're not going to. Let's cancel that because what I do want to do, I think is come back here and go register, check pictures. I'm going to register all these just so I can score them and see if I've got any really low scores. So I don't have to click through everyone. Cause the ones that I was taking pictures of last night or seeing come in were really good. Um, but this won't take that long. And what it'll do is it'll score all my light frames. So it's going to go through, it's going to uh, register all the calibration frames as well. And if I see any really low scores, like down at the bottom, then I'll check those out. And if I, if I want to call them, call, call them, then I will get rid of them. 86 of them. Oh yeah. All right. So it's done. Let's check this first one here. Move this uh, gray slider over. Kind of does a preview stretch. What? Sorry, did I just scream in your ear? What? That's bad ass. Look at that. Uh, so we got really high scores, which is great in the 4,000s. Check this low score out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of that one. We're gonna say remove from list. Check this next one out. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, whoa, what was that one? See, why did I get a high score? It looks like crap. Remove from list. So 
I'm just going through these, just checking some of these lower scores. Which the scoring system kind of seems a little weird. Some of those should have been like garbage scores. Who knows how they, I don't even know where you guys are at. Who knows how they score this stuff? Most of the time it's pretty accurate though. Okay, so let's go back in here to register check pictures. Uh, stack after registering. We've already done the star count. Click OK. Let's see what we got. Almost three hours. I'm loving it. Um, we've got a couple of gain settings. It says, gives me a warning here. It says gain does not match light frame gain. Uh, yeah, I might have to reshoot my darks. Didn't even think about that because what I did is I uh, shot. Well, since I changed the gain settings on my light to gain 75 offset 15, I may have to reshoot my darks and my bias. Didn't think about that, but I'm too excited. I want to see it. So let's run it and see what it looks like. All right, so we're almost done stacking here, 27 to 29. Uh, even at two times drizzle, this computer burns through this stuff. So it's computing the final picture. And it's going to save this uh, autosave file in uh, our Crescent Nebula HA folder. So once it starts doing a image preview of the file that it saved, and then we can go into Photoshop and start doing some processing here. All right, cool. So let's minimize um, Deep Sky Stacker. Go down here to Photoshop CC. Okay, then all I gotta do is just drag that autosave file over to this main screen and it'll open right up. Wow, I haven't even done any stretching yet. And look at that. Look, <laughs> look, 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 look. God, I can't wait to get some color on this. All right, so all I'm gonna do is come over here to image adjustment all levels. I'm still in a 32 bit mode. I'm just gonna push this over to like 1.3. I do one little tiny level stretch in the 32 bit mode before I make the switch. Sometimes I do that just so I can see something. Um, I'm just gonna push this black slider right over here to the foot of the histogram. Click okay. I'm over here, image mode, 16 bit. And make sure that the method is set to exposure and gamma as always, and click okay. And then I like to set a color sampler tool that works and I can only, I've only been able to find that it works in RGB mode. So come over here to image mode and change that to RGB. So right off the bat, um, I have no idea. There's so much nebulosity here. What I want to do is I want to find a dark space that doesn't have any nebulosity that I can put a color sample tool so that I can um, adjust my background and level that out. So I'm going to come down here to the this little circle, semicircle here. These are my uh, adjustment layers and click threshold. So I'm going to push this over. You're going to start seeing this thing blow up all the way over here is white. So you really just want to kind of right about there. So basically everything in white is nebulosity and what's in black would be your background sky. Um, so come over here to this uh, eyedropper tool, use a drop down list and choose color sampler tool. So let's zoom in here. Man, there's so much. I gotta find a really dark spot, like right there. Okay, close that. And then we can right click on it and delete that layer. So now our background numbers are popping up. Of course, since this is all grayscale, they should be pretty even. Um, and I'm gonna take and go to image adjustment levels. And I wanna push that down get my background to like 40, somewhere in there, and click okay. So let's duplicate that copy. And I'm gonna call this one pre-curve. So all I wanna do here is I just wanna lift the data just a little bit in curves. Um, and then I'm gonna do a background noise reduction. So image adjustment uh, curves, and I'm just gonna create a small S curve on either side of this histogram peak. So right here in front, I'm just gonna lift it up slowly, come right behind it, drag it down, 
And basically I've created an S curve in here that gives me a little contrast. And you see it's raised my background level up here. So I'm gonna go image adjustment levels and push this down to 39. Look at this, this is awesome. So now I really don't wanna stretch uh, any noise. I don't want to as much as possible. I wanna go ahead and reduce some of that background noise that you're gonna get. Inevitably you're gonna get, even though I shot this at minus 20. Uh, so I'm gonna duplicate that copy again. Double click it and name this one BG Noise. And then I wanna make a copy of that. So I got BG Noise copy and BG Noise. <clears throat> so when the top one's selected, zoom in here, our darker area. And hit filter, um, noise, and reduce noise. And I've got it set to a strength of eight, preserving details at 26, reduce color noise at 52, which is kind of a mood point right now since we don't have any color, and 10% on sharpen details. I'm gonna click okay to that. So this is a pretty big file, so you see it's gonna take just a bit. So we can zoom in here. Not sure if you can see it, but it is reducing some of the speckle, speckling. And we can also come in here and go to filter, noise, and run despeckle. And that really kind of smooths it out just a little bit more. So let's zoom back out. So we don't want that noise reduction to affect any of the details in this image. So we're going to click that top one and we're going to drop down here to this little rectangle with a hole in it. And that's going to create a layer mask. So the reason we make copies is we've done our noise reduction to this upper copy layer. Now we're going to go back down here to BG noise, which is basically the same as the pre-curve. We're going to uh, select all by hitting control A. We're going to copy all that by hitting control C. Hold the alt key down and click into the layer mask and then hit control V. And that paste, if you were shooting, uh, if you're doing this process and you're shooting color, you would see this as grayscale. So don't worry. Uh, and then the last step is hit control I and that inverts everything. So now what is black will be protected and what is white will receive the noise reduction. And so now I want to come in here to image adjustment levels You see your histograms on the right hand side now because your background is white. And you're going to push this black slider over and you're going to start seeing your details darken up. So now you want to find that balance, you know, and so move this white slider over to the left your black slider over just a little bit we really want to protect the crescent and some of this outer stuff in here that white slider over just a little bit more um i like that i mean this image or this target doesn't have a lot of sharpness in it inherently except for the crescent nebula does in some spots so you know some of this right here and any of the gray will receive a percentage of noise reduction but not a full but what's in white is going to get all the noise reduction that we just did. So let's just click OK to that. And that smooths it out. And right click on that top layer and click Merge Down. And then come in here to Select and hit Deselect. So now you can see our Crescent Nebula details are still intact. Some of the internal portions of it received some noise reduction which is cool for the most part we've got a good sharp image but noise reduction on the background let's duplicate that copy double click it and we're going to name this one curve so now we're going to do a fairly uh, liberal stretch here and widen this histogram and really bring out these details so let's come back in here and image adjustment uh, curves and what I want to do is I don't want to raise my background level. So let's see what they're at. We're at 39. So I want to anchor those. So click this finger, click our uh, point here, and then set an anchor point. Even those numbers up. And then right here in front of the data, let's just lift. Look at that. So we really kept our background dark, but we really pulled out and brightened up the nebulosity. And remember, this is an HA uh, image only, so it's going to be black and white. <clears throat> cool. So let's do that one more time. 
except for this time I think I'm gonna do it just a little more globally I'm not gonna set an anchor point I'm just gonna create that S curve again and click OK to that I mean I'm really almost done with this image to be honest with you there's not he knows the data is so good there's not a lot I can do to it other than stretch it so let's do one more curve stretch this time we're gonna we're gonna go back to the process we're gonna anchor our black point let's see where it's at though yeah so we've actually dropped it down which is fine let's run right behind here click that anchor point we'll even those values up I always like to even it to the bottom one and lift again just slightly this time and click OK I mean that is a pretty bright crescent nebula <laughs> so let's uh, duplicate that copy and we're gonna name this one cam raw so we'll go in here to filter camera raw filter and the clarity tab is going to brighten things up for us slide that see how it really brightens it up we can dehaze it just a little bit we don't need to worry about vibrance and saturation right now since it's black and white we're going here to the tonal curve <clears throat> and let's boost the highlights just a little bit let's lower our shadow down that'll give us a little contrast and we can sharpen the image up some and then enter just a little bit of luminance noise reduction kind of smooth it out and click OK so you can see huge difference Wow I mean the detail in this thing is going to be incredible when I get uh, some color added to it. Uh, so let's uh, duplicate that copy. And let's name this one Local Contrast. And we'll run in here to the Astronomy Action Tool Set. And we're going to go down to um, Local Contrast Enhancement. Let's run that and see what it does. So for this image, I may post it out you know, just as a grayscale black and white image. I'll do some star reduction on it here in a little bit, just cause I like to reduce some of the stars, but obviously I'm not gonna wanna save this file as is. I wanna save it as a copy because once I get my oxygen and my sulfur data to blend with it, I'm gonna want an untouched, uh, unprocessed file cause I don't wanna have any star reduction in it. I wanna do that as a final step. All my star reduction is typically a final step. There is a ton of stars in this area of the sky. So let's check it out. And it really gave us a pretty good contrast. I don't think I want all that though. I think I'm gonna push this down to zero, maybe 40%, something like that. <clears throat> all right, so let's go here to file, save as. Or we don't want to mess with this auto save. We want to leave it alone. So we're going to back out of that right here. And we can call this 411-20 uh, uh, HA process 1. As a TIFF file, I'll click save. Okay. So now we come over here to layer and go down here to flatten image. And that's going to flatten all of our layers here. We're going to duplicate that copy. And we're going to do some, some uh, star reduction. That really makes this uh, nebulosity pop out. So we'll go back into our actions. Go down here underneath the astronomy action tool set and select, or choose select bright, brighter stars. And we're going to run that action by hitting the play button down here. All right, so you can see it's selected lots of stars. So let's zoom in here and see what that selection looks like. So it looks like it's getting most of the stars, but not all the stars. So 
Let's come in here to the select tab and go to modify, expand, and let's expand that by um, three picture, three pixels, not pictures. So you can see now we've got a good selection around our stars here. Let's go back in here to the select tab, go to modify and go to feather. We're going to feather that by two pixels. That's just going to round it off a little bit. That looks good. So hit control H and that uh, hides the selection. Go in here to filter, other, minimum. And I got it set as a radius of two pixels. Let's click OK to that. So you can see on and off. Now I've got another step where I would uh, <clears throat> basically create a mask out of this and uh, paint back in some of the stars, but I'm not going to do that with this one until I have some color data. I just want to reduce the stars just a little bit. So let's merge that down. We're going to do one more little star reduction trick here. Duplicate that copy. Come in here to filter, noise, dust and scratches. And I've got it set to a radius of four. I found that's pretty good because I still get my details. Um, but it really kind of cleans up some of these background fainter stars. Look okay to that Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. And the thing we can do to kind of bring back our details because dust and scratches will really wipe out the details in your image if you're not careful is let's change that blending mode to darken and you may not be able to see it on the screen here but it really it really brings back some of the sharpness so i like that um so now i want to do some spot uh, processing on this thing and just kind of brighten up some of the some selective highlights darken it down to kind of gain a little more contrast in the image so the first thing I want to do is come in here to layer I'm gonna go flatten image I'm gonna duplicate the copy come in here to my threshold layer and hit curves and I'm just gonna lift it just slightly just like that Close that down and point here at this uh, layer mask and hit control I. And that's basically going to put it back to the way it was. And now that this is black, I want my foreground to be white. And it's chosen. I'm going to select my paintbrush tool. I've got an opacity of 23%, flow of 40%. So I'm just going to come in here, kind of use my bracket keys to narrow it down here and just paint in some of the highlights just so, some of the selected highlights just like that so if you hit the eyeball on and off on this layer mask that we created you see that's just bring it in we can reduce that down just paint the center of the brain here And I've got some great detail, but I definitely want to get some more data. You can see just barely. I just like this almost lightning bolt effect here. You can see it's just brightening up just those, those areas. Got a little bit of coolness going on here. We've got some details down here. Let's see what we got here. So we're not brightening the whole image. We're just doing this selectively. Cool. I like it. Um, I'm going to feather that out just a little bit by right click and hit select a mask and then just push this feather slider over just a little bit. Click OK to that. So let's do another uh, curves adjustment layer right on top of it. And this time we're going to bring it down. So we're darkening it up. 
like that and close that out. Same thing, control I. And then now we're gonna go in here to some of our darker areas. And this is like where you can really do some fine tuning of your image. You know, so we'll come back in here between some of these areas, kind of widen it up. With an opacity of 20%, you don't have to worry about jacking the image up too bad. So if you choose your eyeball, see what it's doing? Just creating some spot contrast. And this is where you could spend a ton of time on your image. And I won't because this is a tutorial, but it gives you an idea kind of what we're trying to achieve here. So cool. I mean, once you zoom back out, you're like, huh? But it's there. Okay. Uh, so last step is probably run it back through the uh, camera raw filter. So now we need to create a stamp of everything that's on the bottom here. So we hit the shift key, control key, and alt key at the same time and the letter E. That created a stamp. <clears throat> so let's go back in here to our camera raw filter, which is in the filter tab, camera raw filter. And let's boost the clarity. Again, you see that brightens it up. Push the black level down, gives a little contrast. And I'm just gonna sharpen the details. And then add some modest amount of luminance noise reduction. Click OK. Cool. And we can probably run one more action just to clean it up. Let's duplicate that layer. Double click. We're going to name this one Deep Space Noise. 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 Let's run it. Uh, astronomy action tool set, deep space noise reduction. Let's run that one. Yeah, I think for my final, I think I'm definitely going to shoot some more HA, even though you know, just almost three hours gave me a lot of detail, a lot of detail. Super happy with it. So this is definitely not something that you're going to be able to see on YouTube, but it definitely, uh, kind of smoothed out the back, the background. So I like it. Uh, so we can say file, save as, and I'm gonna name this in process two. And I'm gonna come over here to image, uh, image size. It's a big picture, you know, 9,000 by 7,000 pixels is huge. That's what two times drizzle does for you. Uh, so I'm gonna drop this one down to 60%. And the width and height are chained together. Click OK. That'll reduce the size of the image, both in size and and uh, bytes, megabytes, gigabytes, bytes. And now I want to come over here, do file, save as. Oh, the other one's still saving. <laughs> These big files, it takes a while to save them. But in the meantime, we can come here to file export and I'm going to say save for the web. This creates probably the best version possible to post on Facebook or send to Astro Bin. And click save all the standard settings um, at quality at 84% optimized. So find our folder 1600 Crescent Nebula the 411 folder and it's basically going to rename it the same thing as process 2 but I like to go ahead and put JPEG on the end of it so I know it's a JPEG not a TIFF file without having to click into it and click save cool now it, the other one the process 2 is a full size so I'm gonna click file 
save as process to, and then I'm going to put uh, reduced. So I know that one's been, uh, the image size has been reduced to 60%. Click okay to that and we're done. It was like, I was like live. So you guys are with me to see this thing uh, as I was seeing it for the first time. So cool, appreciate you coming along and uh, clear skies and stay tuned for the H or the Hubble palette version of this. I'll be working on over the coming weeks. All right, take care.